How's it going, PD team? I am super excited to share with you this awesome tool. Today, we're going to be making a time node, which you can find in, in Cinema 4D's Expresso programming language. It's also included in After Effects expressions. I'm not sure why Cinema 4D Redshift has not included such a node inside of Redshift, but they haven't made one yet. I know a lot of other rendering engines have the time node. So instead of getting all frustrated and requesting a bunch of times, I just decided to make one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make your own time node. Don't worry if you're new to Cinema 4D Redshift shaders. This one's super easy and by the end of the tutorial you'll see how quickly and useful this video will be. So let's check it out. So here's the node that I made and what we're doing is we're starting off with a red color. This is going to be the simplest example I could come up with. We're starting with a red color. What this node is going to do is shift like this and change the color and you'll notice when we get to 360 it ends. So what I'm doing is I'm running this red color into a color correct node and then shifting the hue to from 0 to 360 degrees and that will spit us out the color well the hue shift we've linked up to the time node and the way this time node works is you put your last frame that you want the animation to end on right here and then it'll cycle through these numbers so in our case we're going from 0 to 360 and once it gets done with the last frame you have a checkbox that says whether or not it loops or not so if this is unchecked this Disable loop. This is unchecked. It'll go from 0 to 360 and then back to 0 to 360 and then back to 360. And just loop checking this will make it freeze on 360 and clamp the value. So that's it. Let's build this thing. Okay, here we are with the blank shader. I'm going to go ahead and add a color node and also a correct color correct node. We'll make this fully saturated red. Plug it into the color correct node. Plug it into the color channel. I'm going to turn off reflection so it's just not shiny. And then what we want to do is we want to cycle this hue shift so you can see it's changing we shift it so it's 0 to 360 that's going to be important so I'll expose the parameter by holding control and clicking the dot not the keyframe that exposes the parameter and then the trick with this is we're going to use an OSL shader so I'm going to type in OSL and the OSL shader we're going to remap it the time we're going to turn this into a time node so what we're going to do is we're going to do a change range and make sure you do the float change range we'll plug it in and plug this in here and our float change range our min and our max, so our, our old min max values, this I'm going to just set to 500, which is going to be the 500th frame that it's going to loop. The next set of numbers, this 0 and 1, this is the start, and this is going to be the end, so we're going to put 360, because 360 is the last value we want. And there we go. So next what we're going to do is we're going to do our programming. And this programming, don't worry about this, it's super easy, anyone can do it, it's very simple. So first I want to rename my OSL shader to time node, and you just click right here and you'll see it renames it. You don't want to rename this here. You want to name it in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this whole line and are going to just use the output. The output's going to be a float. So we're changing it to float. And then we're going to rename this from out color to out time. We're going to get rid of this here and say out time. So this is going to be the output. So instead of out color, it's going to say out time. So if I click here, you can see it now says out time. So our output that we're going to bring is a float and the name of it is out time equals. And then instead of putting a zero here, we're going to just type in time and then click here. And now it should be working. So this just says shader is going to be called time node. Our output's a float. The name of the float value is going to be called out time and the value of that out float is time. And then here we're outputting it. Make sure you leave the brackets everything the way it is and that should be it and then we're going to plug this in here and if you did this correct if I just move forward in time to something like 120 and turn on my IPR you can see it's green so I should be able to I'm recording so it might not be as updatable. Yeah, you can see it's changing. So it's shifting. Okay, so if I go back to frame zero, it should be red. Yep. Okay, so it's working. So let's plug in and group this. So we're going to take this, these two here, the change range and the time node we just created, and we're going to right click and say group nodes, and we'll call this time. I like giving it a color. So here we go. There's the time node. I'm going to go inside, and then what we're going to do is look at these values. So this old max, this old range max is going to be this one here, and we're going to click and drag and say new output, 
and we'll rename this quickly and we'll call this last frame or maybe frame length, anim length. You come up with your own name. So that's going to be the last frame of our animation. Next, what we want to do is this value is going to be our start value and our end value. So I'll call this start value and value. There we go. And then the last one is this checkbox. This checkbox is going to be what loops it or not. So when it's checked, it clamps the value, meaning it will not repeat. It just goes to 360 and then stops. So we want to leave this unchecked, add the value. So I'm going to hold down command or control click, and then we'll click this and I'll call this disable loop. And then we don't need these inputs. So I'm going to just delete them, make sure they're selected in yellow. And there's our time node. There we go. So now you can save this, save it as a node if you want, add it to your asset browser, but that's it. You can test it out by just changing the frame and you'll see once it gets to 500, it should be red and then it loops again. But if I check it, it's going to stay on that after 500. 500. So you can see it goes, and then stops at 500, unchecked, loops, and it'll go to orange, yellow, then green, so on. So anytime you need a time feature within your shader, this is, as of right now, the best way to do it. And it runs fast and doesn't give you any glitch. I have not run into any glitches so far. So that's it. Hope you found it useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.